Uh, Congressman Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The best way I could describe the uh, problems that we face here in this country as well as the problem that the Federal Reserve faces is that uh, we're indeed between the rock and the hard place because uh, we have a serious problem. We don't talk about much how we got here. We talk about how we're going to patch it up. The bubble has uh, been burst. We saw what happened after the NASDAQ bubble burst. We don't ask how it crea was created, and then we have a housing bubble, and it's uh, deflating and then it's spreading. Uh, and, and yet, uh, nobody says, where does it come from? And what, do, what is the advice that you generally get? And that is, inflate the currency. They don't say inflate the currency. They don't say debase the currency. They don't say devalue the currency. They don't say cheat the people who are saved. They say lower the interest rates. But they never ask you, and I don't hear you say too often, the only way I can lower interest rates is I have to create more money. I have to uh, lower the discount rate. I have to make it generous. I have to increase reserves. I have to lower the interest rates and fix the interest rates, uh, overnight rates. And, and the only way you can do this is by increasing the money supply. And I see this as the problem that we don't want to talk about. Uh, currently, of course, we can't follow the money supply with M3, but we can follow one of your statistics, which is the MZM, the ready cash available, and we see that inflation is alive and well. Uh, it's, uh, that that uh, money supply figure is going up about 20% uh, per annualized. And uh, this, this just means that the dollar gets weaker. And everybody said, well, the dollar is, that's great, dollar weaker, we're going to have exports. And that is a fallacy, maybe for a month or two, but it just invites inflation. And unless we get down to the bottom of it and define what inflation is uh, and not look at only prices, this was, this was taught by the free market economists all through the 20th century. They said, beware. They will increase the money supply, but they will make you concentrate on prices. And they will give you CPIs and PPIs, and they'll fudge those figures, and they'll talk about wage and price controls to solve our problems. And we ignore the fundamental flaw, and that is that not only have we had a subprime market in housing, the whole the whole economic system is subprime in that we have artificially low interest rates. And it wasn't under your, your tenure in office. It's been going on for 10 years or longer, and now we're bearing the fruits of, the, uh, fruits of that, uh, that policy. I mean, a 1% interest rate, overnight rates, and, and, and that's not a distortion. Instead of looking at these, um, the, the uh, price, the consumer prices, which nobody in this country uh, really, really believes, we need to talk about the distortion, the malin investment, the, the, uh, the misdirection, the bad information that is gotten from artificially low interest rates. In many ways, some people refer to you as a price fixer, you know, because you fix interest rates. The market is powerful and usually overwhelms and does come into play, but w when the Fed fixes an interest rate at 1%, that's, that is uh, price fixing. At the end of your testimony, you suggested that we should address this housing crisis and we should have rules that would address uh, deceptive lending practices. And I just think that is not, not the answer at all. The real deception is when we distort the value of money. When we create money out of thin air, we have no savings, and yet there's so-called capital, there's, a, there's, a, there's money available, but it comes from what you have to do, and the pressure is put on you. So I think we have to get back to the very fundamentals of, of where this problem comes from. And the bubbles occur when we have this malinvestment and the creation of new money. So my question boils down to this. How in the world world can we expect to solve the problems of inflation, that is, the increase in the supply of money, with more inflation? Well, Congressman, first just a small technical point on the uh, growth in money. Money growth has been pretty moderate over the last few years. The, the gr increase in MZM is probably related to the financial turmoil. People have been taking their savings out of you know, risky assets, putting them into the bank, and that makes the money uh, data uh, show faster growth. So I'm, I'm not sure that's indicative of policy necessarily. Um, what we're trying to do is uh, follow the mandate that Congress gave us, and the mandate that Congress gave us is to look at employment and inflation as measured by domestic price growth. And as I talked about today, um, uh, and I think you would agree that uh, we do see risks to inflation, and we are taking those into account, and we want to make sure that uh, that uh, prices remain as stable as possible in the United States. But how can you do this and pursue this 
the policy you have without further weakening the dollar. There's a dollar crisis out there and people's money is being stolen. People who have saved, they're being robbed. I mean, if, if you have def a, a devaluation of the dollar at 10%, people have been robbed of 10%, but how can you pursue this policy without addressing the subject that somebody's losing their wealth because of a weaker dollar and it's going to lead to higher interest rates and a weaker economy? If somebody has their wealth in dollars and they're going to buy consumer goods in dollars, and it's a typical American, then the, uh, the, 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 the decline in the dollar, the only effect it has on their buying power is it makes imported goods more expensive. Yeah, but not if you're retired and elderly and you have CDs and, and their, their, their uh, cost of living is going up no matter what your CPI says. Their cost of living is going up and they're hurting and that's why the people in this country are very upset. <laughs> Are you okay? Well, we have a certain level of uh, anxiety up here, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, because...